Okay, this is a tutorial for speed grade, a kind of a complete tutorial in 20 minutes or less. I guarantee it or your money back. We've got a timeline here with an edited short film. I'm going to right click on that and we're going to duplicate this because we're going to use one sequence for color and one sequence for the original sequence. I'm going to go in here and rename my sequence I'm doing for color. Kill project for color. In this timeline here, we're going to get this ready for speed grade. And the way we do that is we have a few different items in here that have to be taken care of. First of all, you have an After Effects project file, which will not be recognized as a media file in speed grade uh, on an EDL list. So we have to convert anything in here that is a generator or, or After Effects file or title into movie files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, each one of these clips here. I'm going to drag them up to my source monitor. Here is my in and out point for that After Effects file of a corrected clip. I'm going to hit uh, Command M, and we're going to choose a format. If you're on Mac, you can use uh, ProRes 444, especially if you're using red footage. And on a PC, or on a PC, I recommend using DPX exportation and put the file as a as a sequence folder. You're going to have to make sure that your image attributes match your clip attributes here. These attributes are different here by resolution, so you're going to have to make sure that those match because DPX exports natively out at a, at a different uh, resolution. So I'm going to change my resolution to match 2160, and you're going to make sure three things match on these clip exportations your uh, resolution, your frame rate, and your pixel aspect ratio. Once you do that, you're going to export out each individual clip, uh, and then you're going to re import these clips once you've exported out all these generators, After Effects files, titles, so on. Let me show you a couple of different examples here. Here's a title created in Premiere, this generated title in Premiere. We're going to have to export out this whole sequence as a QuickTime movie. Okay, once these files have been exported, you've exported out titles, you've exported out all your generators and your titles and any black video as well. This black video clip is a uh, generator in Premiere. You have to export that out as well. And After Effects files, those main things you have to export out into uh, QuickTime movies or DPX file sequences. Now we're going to import them into back into Premiere. Once these are imported into Premiere, you're going to go through and replace each one of these videos in your color project here. So uh, first of all, I've got my opening title here. So I'm going to grab my opening title, which is a DPX sequence, drop it in, and make it match up exactly. You're going to put these exact same dissolves on this clip up here. And I just copy these ones and paste them onto the clip up above here. And now I'm going to hold down Option and arrow down and replace that with the new DPX sequence that Speed Grade is going to understand. Same with the effects after uh, effects uh, shots. If you have any clips in Premiere that are using effects, you're going to have to export those out as well if you want to retain those effects. Because uh, once it references the original movie, it will get rid of those effects from Premiere. So we're going to replace the After Effects file that we have in here as well. And that's the shadow removal here. I'm going to put that over the clip. Line it up exactly. Make sure it is lined up exactly with this clip. Arrow or Option, arrow down or Alt arrow down and replace it. You'll replace everything in this timeline. And once you've done that, so it's replaced completely with actual movie files as opposed to generators or titles, where you're going to go up to File and Export. And we're going to export out an EDL. Quick options in EDL here is you can include audio and video levels if you wish. Not really important unless you're doing half dissolves. Uh, but we're going to use, this is very important, use the source file names right there. Uh, you will want to include your transitions. Uh, and now we're going to tell this, uh, we're not going to use the audio in this because we're going to export out a separate audio channel. So I'm going to tell, no, tell this no audio. We're going to bring audio into speed grade by itself. Hit OK. Find a location to save it. And once you save the EDL, we're going to export out. We have our EDL file now. We're going to export out our audio. We're going to tell it to export audio. And we're just going to do an audio mix. I'm going to change this to a WAV file. And we're going to name it. And we're going to export out our audio file. So we have those elements. That OK, once you open up speed grade here, uh, what we're going to do is tell it to open a project. Instead of opening a speed grade project, we're going to find our EDL file. We're going to locate that, which is right there. Here's our, our, our here's our EDL file, little teeny file there. We're going to open it up and it will open it up in a timeline. It's going to recognize some, a few different things here. It's going to recognize dissolves. You'll notice here what you've got is an A roll and a B roll. Basically it'll play a video clip. Let me zoom up on this a little bit. It's going to play a video clip. We've got our black video. Then it's replaced a solid color here for a dissolve, dissolving to our open title to have it fade in. And then as you move over here, it will go from the title. It actually puts an edit on the title to do a dissolve so it doesn't do a funky little zoom up on it. Just trust it. Leave it there. It'll do a dissolve down to solid color. So it fades in, fades out. And now it will fade into the opening stabilized clip here that we had and 
performs and shows the edit from the edit decision list. Doing a dissolve from a clip here, it does a cut and dissolves to the next clip for dissolve and so on. And there's our timeline imported. Now before we actually load these reels, what we're going to do is we're going to have to make sure that our timeline frame rate matches our clip frame rate. We're going to go to our settings here. We're going to go to display or actually to playback. And we're going to tell, I'm in working 23.976 drop frame. So I'm going to type that in there. If you're working in something else like tw just solid 24, you can do that. But if you're in drop frame, make sure you're doing showing this in drop frame. We're going to go down to editing and we're going to change our base frame rate. If it's not changed already to 23.976 to match our frame rate. And we're going to pull this down and use choose the bottom option here. Cho choose both. Or we're going to do both edits and footage have the frame frame rate specified uh, below to conform or cross conform. We're going to put this to 23.976 as well. So you choose this bottom option here, set this to 23.97, and this one to 23.976, and you're all set. Everything is set at that um, at that frame rate. And just to make sure, I'm going to go to my timeline and look at my timeline setup and make sure that our frames per second on our timeline is at 23.976. But right now, if you hit D for desktop, it toggles between your desktop and your visual viewer. Right now, all the files are disconnected. So what we're going to need is reconnect to reconnect our video files. We go to our desktop. We're going to hit D, which goes to all of our clips. We're going to go to the folder, navigate to the folder that we want to find our clips in, uh, that we're going to find all of our footage in. And we're going to go up here and tell it to show sequences from folder and subtree and tell it to show all supported media. So it shows everything that's in this folder and in all the subfolders and supported media, which narrows everything in those folders down to uh, still images, video clips, all the files that can be used in speed grade. Once those have all loaded, you go down to timeline, go down to reels, and we're going to connect these by saying load our timeline files from our desktop files right here. We're going to just click load from desktop. It'll match names as best possible. It'll probably bring this up. Just ignore it. Hit escape. And we go to our timeline and we notice that most reels have been loaded. With my DPX files, it has difficulty sometimes finding file names. So all I'm going to have to do is go to that folder where all my DPX exports are. And if there's anything else missing, you're just going to have to load these really quick. Uh, I'm going to go to the beginning here and start at the beginning. Let's zoom into this option and scroll up to zoom into our timeline. You click all to show your entire timeline. Uh, right here, black DPX. I'm going to find my black video file right there. Drag it and dr hold it over that clip, let go, and it just reconnected it. Uh, same as on opening title, and you're going to continue to do this till all your files are reconnected. So to bring in audio, we're going to go to our kill project, and we're going to show, tell it to show sequences from all folders in subtree. Actually, I know what folder it's in, so I'm just going to tell it to show about it from an individual folder. I'm going to tell it to show all files, because uh, it does not actually show it up as supported media. But now I'm going to find my wave file right there. I'm going to grab it, drag it down, and hold it uh, right below here, and drop it at the bottom there. You might have to grab this and move it over a little bit to line it up if it didn't line up quite right. I'm going to go to the beginning. I'm going to hold down Option and scroll. Zoom up and look. See, this is a little bit off, so I'm going to move that over until it matches right to the frame there. Okay, once all my files have been reconnected, everything will appear this color, and all my files are reconnected, ready to start grading. I'm going to hit Command S or Control S to make sure that my project file is saved, and now I can start working on this. Okay, we're going to go to Look next here. Okay, now that we're on Look, we're going to hit D for Desktop to show our image that we're going to be correcting. Whatever clip is selected down here is what it's going to actually correct up here. So right now you can see that this clip is selected. It's got it highlighted and it's going to be grading that clip. Uh, as you're on a look here, let's go down. Let's uh, get rid of our image here. We're going to make a little bit more room up here to grade. Also, one thing that you're going to be needing are scopes. I'm going to hit A for my scopes. It'll bring up all my scopes over here to the left. Um, two of the major scopes that we're going to be using, I'll show you basically waveform monitor and vector scope uh, for this tutorial. We're going to go to a two uh, scope layout, and I'm going to change this scope. I got my vector scope over here, which I like. I'm going to right click and go over here and go waveform. And actually, we're going to make this we're going to switch to Lumen. So I'm going to use this scope over here for fixing my luminance values and this scope over here for adjusting my color values. So here we go. One other thing I'm going to do is make sure under settings, we're going to go under settings and we are going to go to dynamic quality and make sure that we're set up at one quarter quality uh, playing and half quality pause since this is uh, red footage. And I'm also going to make this downsample the frames so this speeds it up uh, as we're playing it back. 
the scope is going to be your waveform. An unchecked clamp signal, so I can see when our signal is going above 100 here. Uh, a zero on the waveform, this is where blacks uh, disappear in the details. 100 IRE is where your whites disappear in the details. So uh, right here, our blacks are almost touching zero, and they're going to be losing a little bit of detail on the blacks. So we can actually go to our overall here. You've got basically your uh, brightness and contrast slider on your darks, your mediums, and your highlights, essentially. Uh, you can change those here by right-clicking on these sliders. On this slider, we'll uh, change the, the brightness levels, and this will change the colors and your darks, your mids, and your lights. If you want to get even more accurate, you can click on shadows, midtones, or highlights, and it will change the areas, uh, the, the darks, the lights, and the, the highlights, or the darks, the mids, the highlights, in your shadows, or in your midtones, in your, in your highlights. So you have a lot of control over this. Uh, go to overall, you know, right click on this slider, and you can move your mouse now up and down, and uh, after you right clicked on that, and it turns into this virtual slider mode. I'm going to move it up a little bit to about five, my darks, around 5 IRRE, and uh, right click to make it let go again. And now we're going to go to our uh, highlights here, and we're going to bring up our highlights just a little bit so they they pop a little bit more. I'm going to right click on this and bring up my highlights. You know they're going up to 100 there, just right on right between 90. And now this one acts as kind of an exposure range here, your mids. I'm going to right click on that and get my exposure exactly where I want it. Now if we want to create contrast, if we want to create contrast, we're going to go to shadows. And actually, uh, we're going to stretch our region between our uh, darks and our highlights here and we're going to create contrast by stretching those regions. So I'm going to go to my uh, gamma on my shadows, bring those down a little bit, go to my gain, bring those down even a little bit more. So we're kind of bringing down the black ends, go to the midtones and start pulling those up so they stretch away from our uh, dark areas. And as you get that stretch, stretch what you're going to get is contrast and you'll get more of a cinematic look as a result. Hold the zero on the numpad, it shows before and after. And we can change the overall uh, color of this. Looking here, you notice the colors are going up towards the reds and the yellows. Uh, if we grab the, our gamma and we kind of move our gamma settings over. By the way, if you right click here and start moving your mouse, just right click once and then move your mouse. It turns into a virtual mouse mode. You can see the color. Not, now it's not so warm. We moved it off toward the blues a little bit. And we've uh, cooled the shot off a little bit. You also have access to your saturation up here. I'm going to go to our final saturation here, and you can, if you hold down shift, it does it faster. You can bring down your saturation, or you can pump up your saturation. You can see that difference here in your vector scope as it grows out towards these regions here. You're getting more saturation as you drag it backwards. It's going to suck in that saturation, and you get it desaturated. So let's show our before and after here. So we're going to hit zero. There's our before. There's our after. So we're having a completely different look here uh, by messing with this. So. Let's show how to move looks from one clip to the next here. If I want to move this look here on our for, on our opening clip, if I want to move that look from this clip to the next, and the shots kind of match, and then it should be able to work. So I'm going to actually hold, get this clip selected. I'm going to hover my mouse over this previous clip and hit C to copy. Just hit C, and it will copy that look, uh, those filters from this clip to this clip right here. And now we can play through this to see if it looks good. As we play from one clip to the next, and that actually looks pretty good. If you want to see them side by side, you're going to hit your little two up button right here. It'll add you add a second playhead. And you can just go down here and grab this little arrow, grab that and move it a little bit over like that. Now you have two playheads that are showing up here, your left and right. Uh, so you can kind of see a side by side comparison. And if those clips look good, you can grab this playhead here, drag it up so it disappears, turns to an X and get rid of it. Okay, here's a shot of a newspaper here. We might want to highlight kind of a region right here so it brings you concentration right there. So what I'm going to do first is uh, do, do some quick adjustments on our contrast, bring our contrast down. Now I'm going to come over here and we're going to uh, add another primary uh, level and I'm going to add a vignette. On, so we've got our first grade that we did on this primary color, uh, on this primary filter right there. I'm going to go to the next primary and we're going to add a mask. Uh, with that mask out, I'm going to go down here and choose what type of mask. I'm going to choose this little vignette. And we're going to mess with this widget here. you got rotation, you got movement, you have size, and you have feather, and you also have skew. We're going to be grading in the middle here. Actually, we're going to be grading on the outside, then it will feather off to nothingness here. So I'm going to go down here to my primary filter. It shows that we've created a mask on it. I'm going to tell it to grade on the outside of that mask. And now that I've chosen outside instead of inside, 
whatever I do is going to grade on the outside of that mask. I'm going to darken my mids on the outside and kind of highlight that center there. Let me turn this off. There's without, there's with, and we've kind of highlighted the center there, bringing the attention to the mat to that mask right there. And that's just on that one primary layer right there. Here's another version of a secondary color correction. Say we want to bring down the skin tone in this shot right here, kind of bring down the the reddish and kind of yellows, orange skin tone here. I'm going to go down and add a secondary layer down here at the bottom left-hand corner. And we're going to choose a certain uh, color vector that we're going to be grading. I'm going to hit my little uh, color picker right here. I'm going to come up here and click and drag across the skin. And it's selecting those colors across the skin. If you want to see what you've selected, go to gray out, and we're going to tell it to show a white and black mask. And it's showing what is going to be selected for grading here. Right now, everything that's in white will be graded. Everything that's in black won't, and the grays are kind of in between here. Let's see if we can kind of create a mask here to get rid of the wall. And then you can select this mask by hue, saturation, and lightness here, and bright, bright levels. And it looks like the wall kind of shares the same color, so that's going to be difficult. You just basically have to mess with these until you get as much face as you can get. And once we get a good part of the face, you can come over here to uh, the side and we're going to blur that and we're going to blur our uh, mat here so it's not so hard and we're going to denoise it a little bit as well. Uh, once you've done that, you can go back and tell it to show no gray out and now whatever we change is going to change just the color that's in that skin and actually there was some on the wall there as well so we're going to grab um, our gamma here and we're going to move it off to uh, the blue and you notice it's really just kind of affecting the face there and if, actually if we want to just turn down the input saturation here it'll tone down that skin tone right there and look at the the kind of orange color leave and now we've got kind of a regular skin tone there so here's the before kind of orange we let go there it is there's after and we've gotten rid of just the skin tone without affecting the overall hue of this shot one other item that you can do here to, to finish things up is you can add uh, grading layers. I'm going to show you grading layers really quick. We're going to grab this little grading layer right here, drag it down and drop it, and it just puts it on one clip here and make this cover the entire clip. You move that over until you see this little bar down there light up, and it, that means it's goes to exactly to that point at the, the very ending there. I'm going to do the same here, drag it to the very end. Now, whatever we add to this grading layer is going to change everything below. So now we can kind of go for particular looks here. We're going to go down and look at some of these looks and start seeing what happens when we add a layer, when we add a special look to this. These are kind of pre-graded looks right here. You move through these and see if there's something that you like. There's uh, there's, cine, there's cine looks uh, from speed grade. There's camera patches. There's film stock. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. There's some bleach bypass right there. I'm going to go for this bleach bypass look right there, or cinematic looks, whatever you want to do. Uh, I like this bleach bypass right there. So I'm going to click on that. It'll load it onto this uh, grading layer. We can turn that on and off. You can see kind of the before and after. If you don't like how heavy it comes in, you can go to your bleach bypass right there and grab the opacity. And this will work for any grading layer really and turn it kind of on and off until you get exactly what you like. So once we're done, we're going to go to render and we're going to start export out our project here. We're going to pull down our file name here. We're going to find a location and you just choose your location by selecting these arrows and you choose a hard drive and you find the folder location you want to put it in. Once you find it exactly where you want to, you're going to name your file. I'm just going to call this Rough Cut. Now down here, you're going to choose Format on Options. You can choose ProRes if you're on a Mac, or you can go to Other. You can choose QuickTime Videos and do H.264. You can do native MOVs. You can do a whole bunch of different formats in here. You go in here, select your frame rate, your files, uh, your file types. And once you do a new preset, you're going to type in the new type of your preset down here. If I do H.264, I'm going to call this H.264. And I'm going to save that as a preset. I want to choose a preset if I want this, if I, I can do half proxy, which is half of 4K. Uh, since I've got 4K files here, I can do quarter proxy, if you, just depending on if, if this is just a quick viewing file. You can do different qualities, which will render faster. I'm just going to do half proxy for this time. Do the same as proxy, or you can do different resolutions. Uh, if you do different resolutions, you're going to have to choose where you want the letterbox to be added to the top or to crop off the sides, or if you want to crop off the sides here, or if you want to fit it all in. There's different ways of choosing here. So once you're done there, you're going to hit render and it will start exporting out the video. And once that's done, you should be able to import that video back into Premiere, line it up with the sound mix, and you're ready to export your full quality QuickTime file or AVI file or movie file out of Premiere into whatever format that you want for the web, for viewing, for a movie screen, whatever you want to do. As promised, there is your speed grade tutorial in 20 minutes or less.